Hi guys, Steve Woods here from Swooda Cutter UK. Thank you for watching. This tutorial is about how to create or, or use QR codes within your ASP.NET application, whether it be a web app or a Windows Form app or whatever you like. Um, what I've done is I've written a, a helper method, a, a class to query the Google Charts API, which can be found here. Um, it lets you create a QR code on the fly with a URL get request. Um, and this is one of those QR codes there you can encode sort of URLs or any other thing that you want to um, that you want to encode so that when someone scans it with a smartphone or whatever it performs a specific action usually you encode a URL so that you can kind of get people to come to your website by scanning a, a product box or something like that um, but whatever use you have this is how you do it in C Sharp. So what we're going to be doing is, like I say, I've uh, I've created the, this this helper method to um, accommodate all of these parameters because the you, this is the this is the URL that uh, Google requires. It's chart.googleapis.com forward slash chart with a query string with the following parameters. We have a chart type of QR. We have an optional parameter of well it, it's actually required but we don't need to specify it in the helper method because I have default setup we have um, a width and a height for the image that gets returned we have the data that's to be encoded within the image we can specify the output encoding we can specify the error correction level and the margin which is the sort of the, the white uh, border around the outside of the image all of this is taken care of in the helper method um, I've just I've I've just done it as, as a .NET class um, so for sort of ease of coding really. You could just specify everything as a sort of a get request or anything but you would kind of need to refer back to the API if you did that every time you want to do a new image. So at least, at least if it's wrapped within a, a nice C sharp um, class you can sort of reference it and look at the documentation within the code to see what's going on and to see what information you need to provide to get the image you want. So let us jump into Visual Studio. What we what I've set up is um, just a simple um, Windows form application. Um, we have a text box for entering the data that we, we want to encode, whether that be URL or whatever. Um, we have a button for actually generating the, the QR code and calling the helper method, and we have a picture box where the URL that gets returned uh, from the helper method is is uh, displayed. It's basically it, it, the picture box image location property um, in the bottom here or wherever it is, uh, image location gets updated to a URL, so it'll be the equivalent of that HTTPS um, chart.googleapis.com gets chucked into there. And we should see a QR code. So what we do is the, the running of the program basically means you enter the data, the URL, you double click on this, well, or single click on this button, but if I double click on it to bring the code up, you can see we set up a variable called data, which is a string variable. We set it as empty. Um, if there is an, uh, if there is a value within that text box, which there will be, it'll be our URL. We transfer that value to the data variable, and we then pass it into our QR code helper as a uh, constructor parameter, and then we call a generate URL um, method, which returns us a string value, which is stored in QR, which is then passed to the image location property on the picture. All that QR string will be will be the returned. Um, value from uh, from from the API simply this and it, the way it works is dead simple actually it's uh, if we just jump into this helper method you can see we have the service URL set up as a, um, a, a private string it's kind of set so that we can replace different parameters for each parameter I've put a placeholder text um, we've got the QR data which would obviously be our URL we've got the height uh, we've got the width, we've got the encoding, we've got the error correction, and if we scroll further along, we've got the margin. All of these um, are replaced in the method generate URL, and they are replaced with these other private properties, which are either specified by default in the main uh, parent constructor. You can see we've got height, width, data, encoding, error correction level, and margin. Or they can be specified as overloads. Um, we've obviously got the, the, the same... Uh, constructor set up with different overloads depending on how specific you want to be when generating your QR code. So we, uh, I mean on this one we can specify the data, the width, the height, the encoding, the error level and the margin if we so wish. If we only simply want to specify the data then the parent um, constructor will set up a default value of 100 pixels wide and high for uh, every image and the encoding will be set to UTF 
the error correction will be set to default and the margin will be set to a default of 4. Incidentally, these um, encoding options are their separate classes, static classes up here, which are accessible to uh, the main class. Um, these are just sort of C-sharp depictions of, of what each parameter um, requirement is for the API. So if we say QR encoding options dot UTF, then it passes that parameter into the URL uh, down here, uh, encoding. And the same for the error correction level. It's just a, a, a more sort of visual list of, of what the error corrections mean because the parameter that gets passed into Google is L or M instead of 7% uh, or 15%, which is a, a lot easier to sort of manage in code. Um, that's all they're for. But as I say, by default, they are set to their sort of standard UTF uh, encoding. And I think that's 7%. Um, error correction tolerance um, but all that does let's get back to it um, it when we call this generate URL method we basically take this service URL with all of its placeholders and all we do is we just replace the placeholders within the URL with the values of our different properties on the uh, on the QR code helper object and all that does is returns a string value which is then returned as QR which is then passed to the image location property of our picture box and we can view the output so let's do it just run the program um, we have a console at the bottom there so we can see what's going on I'm just going to bring that out a bit um, if I enter www.swoo.co.uk generate QR code and you can see that's the URL that was passed to the web service and um, with all of our parameters um, specified all the defaults because if you remember all we did was um, we've just specified the, the main constructor there are no overloads specified there for the height and width so you can see the image is 100 pixels wide it's 100 pixels high um, it has UTF encoding it has an error correction level of whatever 7% default that L and then it has a margin of 4 um, you can see if I just do a different URL say bbc.co.uk the QR code will be different so you can see it's working and obviously the URL has been uh, transferred to bbc.co.uk if we want to specify further parameters by using the the overloads within the method say we want to use this one where we specify the width and height uh, we can simply just add them as uh, as values uh, let's have it 250 width 250 height so now when we run it and we encode a URL generate the QR code should be a lot bigger so you can see it's it's taken on the the parameter of 250 by 250 so we've got a bigger image and you can just adjust it to however you like um, as I say I've taken into account all of this the different parameters um, that the API requires so implementing this in your C-sharp code should be dead simple um, that's all there is to it really um, it does kind of place a requirement on your your application to have internet access available um, there are third-party DLLs that you can include um, with your uh, desktop application or whatever but to be honest I mean internet access is quite ubiquitous nowadays so it's it's kind of well for most people anyway so th this is a, a an easy solution if you need a third-party component and so be it but for a web interface um, sorry for a web application this should be a fairly good solution um, so I hope you find that useful. I hope you, I'll put the uh, the code on GitHub so you can just download it. Um, it'll also be within this blog post at the bottom. Um, feel free to send me any feedback if there are any corrections or or, or just any feedback you, you like really. Just to let me know how I'm doing with these tutorials, I would really appreciate. It. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.